Has your company ever been afraid to raise prices of its products or services because you didn't want to lose volume or customers? Have you ever wondered how much volume you will lose when you increase your prices? Well, these questions are answered by a concept called price elasticity. When you know your price elasticity, you know how much or how little you can increase prices without losing profits. In this video, I will explain price elasticity in more depth. Let's get started. I'm Philip Daus. Thank you for joining. The price elasticity describes how the volume of a product changes in function of a change in price. Mathematically, it's a simple ratio. It's the division of the volume change as a percentage over the price change as a percentage. The resulting elasticity is a unitless number and it's almost always negative, though it's typically expressed and discussed in absolute terms. So when people talk about an elasticity of minus four, they essentially talk about high elasticity of four. Let's look at a simple example. In this example, a company sells 100 units of a product at $100 per product. So it has revenues of $10,000. Let's assume this company increases its price to $120 and because of this price increase, volumes drop to only 90 units. So a price increase of 20% leads to a volume reduction of 10%. The price elasticity in this case is minus 10%, the volume change, over plus 20%, the change in price, which equals negative 0.5. Here we are talking about an inelastic demand because the percentage change in volume is lower than the percentage change in price. This company earns revenues after the increase of $120 times 90, the units, equals $10,800, again, after this price increase. Now let's assume a second scenario. Here the same company, when increasing the price to $120, is only able to sell 70 units. So an increase in price by 20% leads to a volume reduction of 30%. So the elasticity is negative 30% over plus 20% or negative 1.5. In the second scenario, we're talking about an elastic demand because the percentage change in volume is higher than the percentage change in price revenues decrease to $8,400. Please note that in both scenarios, an increase in price leads to a decrease in volume. The elasticity is nothing but the slope in the price demand curve, and it describes how much volumes are reduced when prices go up. In the first scenario of an inelastic demand, revenues of the companies increase. And on the other hand, in scenario two with an elastic demand, revenues decrease when prices are raised by 20%. Having elastic demand does not necessarily mean that a company cannot or should not increase prices, particularly when we assume that the company is trying to optimize profits. To prove this concept, let's assume that in the base case, the current gross margin of this company is 20%. So to simplify, it makes $20 per unit and consequently current cost per unit sold are $80. In our base case, the company makes $10,000 in revenues, it sells 100 units with total costs of $8,000. So the resulting profit is $2,000. Now, first scenario, when the prices increase by $20, units sold drop to 90, which means that the total costs go down to $7,200. With revenues of 10,800 and reduced total costs, profits increase to $3,600. In our second scenario, revenues drop to a mere $8,400 after the price increase, but the costs decrease also to $5,600 due to the decrease in units, and the company earns profits of $2,800. In other words, even in scenario two, profits have increased by 40%. So given current gross margins, in this scenario of elastic demand in which both volumes and revenues drop, a price increase could make a lot of sense if the company ceases to optimize its profitability. Please remember that price elasticity helps us to predict how volumes will behave in function of a price change. And with that, we can forecast volumes, revenues, and profitability. Not knowing your elasticity is just like flying blind. There are different ways to measure elasticities, which I will discuss in another video. For now, just be aware that empirical price elasticities for consumer products typically vary between zero and minus five. Elasticities beyond minus five are extremely rare and typically more linked to promotional activities or external effects. 
This chart shows elasticities for over 1,800 empirically measured cases for consumer goods. In the B2B space, elasticities tend to be a bit lower, and most frequently in the 0 to minus 3 range. There are a variety of reasons for this, but in general terms, there are higher barriers to switch in B2B, making volumes more sticky. Lastly, I want to highlight that elasticity is almost always negative. That means when a company increases prices, volumes will drop. When a company reduces prices, volumes will go up. The only question is by how much. There are only very few exceptions to this rule of negative elasticities. Here are some examples. Competitive reaction. For example, when a competitor increases its prices to the same or higher degree, then elasticities stay flat or decrease. Changes in value or perceived value. Oftentimes, companies announce product changes or features and benefit changes alongside with price increases. This is to lower the elasticities. Veblen or Giffen goods. Veblen goods are luxury items that radiate status, for which price is a signal of exclusivity. So when you raise price, often volumes actually go up. Giffen goods are essential goods, such as wheat or potatoes, for which there might be no ready substitutes, with a similar effect. I have to admit that in 20 years in pricing, I have not yet seen an actual Veblen or a Giffen good with positive elasticities. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please give this a thumbs up and let me know your questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, click like, subscribe, and for more great pricing videos, check out the rest of our YouTube page.